passed unanimously by the Board of Supervisors. Uh, that takes us to uh, item number 3.3. .3. This is uh, the second reading or adoption of Ordinance 884, an ordinance of the County of Riverside regulating targeted residential uh, picketing. Uh, we have a few speakers. The first speaker I'd like to call up is uh, Lyra Bishop. Ms. Bishop? And if you would also please state the city that you're from. Hi, good morning. It's just my luck to go first. Okay. Um, thank you so much for hearing me. Um, I'm not really that prepared because I wasn't sure if I was going to speak today or not. I was here on the 9th, and I know that a lot of people were very emotional about the whole issue. And where, where are you from? What city? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm from Paris. Thank you. <laughs> I, um, I just want to say that when I left on the 9th, I went out and I looked up Frisbee versus Schultz. I read the opinion, and it seems to me that it has to do with... Um, private residence, not a mixed-use property. And what we have at Gilman Springs is a mixed-use property that the primary purpose of that property is business. Um, I got a business card from Catherine Frazier, Director of Public Affairs, on the 9th, and it has Golden Era Productions. That's not a residence. It's a business. The secondary use of that property is residential. There just happens to be residences on the property. Um, I think that a lot of emotion went into this ordinance. I would ask, especially Supervisor Buster, to reconsider your position. I have no affiliation with either side. I was a protester at the Dave Allen Dokic protest, as most of you know. Um, that's why I'm here. I think this is a First Amendment issue, not a freedom of religion issue. I would ask that even though I believe you guys are going to adopt this today, that you just think about it a little bit more. Um, Frisbee versus Schultz had to do with an abortion clinic. The doctor did not perform abortions at his residence, yet he was picketed there, similar to your situation. I'm on the fence with that. I don't know where I stand. But if this ordinance were to be enacted, then the only thing that would be required is to put a room in the back of every abortion clinic and say, it's my residence. And then you couldn't pick it. Picketing a business is different than picketing a residence, according to Frisbee versus Schultz. I would ask Supervisor Buster, please reconsider your position because you seem to be the only voice of reason um, on this issue. Um, I, I think, just from reading the opinion, the entire opinion, that if there were to be a, uh, a, a lawsuit, they would have a very strong position. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bishop. And uh, I might remind you and the public that uh, while there may have been an instigating issue that brought this uh, ordinance to fruition, um, this is uh, targeted to residential uh, properties only, and uh, we're prepared today to show maps with any affected property that uh, some of you may be concerned about showing you that uh, it's only those residential areas that are, are uh, as a part of this ordinance, and that I appreciate the, the, um, the case law that was brought up. Our, our, our ordinance is um, more liberal uh, than that ordinance that was upheld by the uh, Supreme Court. Our next speaker is Julie <coughs> Walty. I hope I'm saying Wacky, Wackle. Julie, W A C R Z, maybe? Waltz? Okay. So much for my pharmaceutical, pharmacy skills here, I'm reading names. But, uh. <laughs> Good morning, Good morning honorable Julie. supervisors. How are you this morning? Nice to see you again. Um, I, too, I'm not affiliated with either organization, protesters or organization. I'm here in regards to the Ordinance 884. I personally feel it reeks of political favoritism. People have been protesting in Riverside County for years. All of a sudden, you choose to ramrod this ordinance through and choose to place limits and restrictions 
on all the constitutional rights of all the citizens of Riverside? You know, there are laws that cover the books and codes on, pardon me, there are laws and codes on the books to sufficiently cover any violation of the law by any protester. In my opinion, the Board of, the board of Supervisors has become involved in a dispute between an organization and protesters. It makes the public wonder, why all the urgency to ramrod this ordinance through? Does some type of personal or financial relationship exist? To assure the public that there is not a conflict of interest, the board should open their political and personal and financial books to the press. There are several reporters here today, and I'm sure that they would be willing to be neutral the public needs to know why the urgency. Why limit protesting after all these years? Will we ever be able to join hands and protest in front of a violent high-risk sex offender's house? What if a, a high-risk sex offender came into your neighborhood? Will we be able to revise this ordinance or write a new one? Uh, the contents as in Frisbee versus Schultz, the, will the new one contain a neutral or a content specific? I urge you to reconsider what you're doing. You're stepping on everybody's rights. Please, stop and think about what you're doing. I don't understand the urgency of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Julie, and uh, just so that the public knows, uh, the elected officials that sit on this board and any other board are required by law to do financial disclosures. So if there are any uh, inferences of financial um, bias, financial impropriety, uh, it has to be put on our forms, what we've collected, and uh, that is public information. So you can see any contributions made by anyone to any board members that, that sit here. I also will remind you that this has a 30-foot um, radius from a property line. So I fully support, just like you do, Julie, and we've, we've marched together. Oh, yeah, And we, we will have. continue to march together uh, from uh, the property line. It does not mean that we cannot protest uh, sexual predators that go into neighborhoods. Uh, this has just established some limits to ensure uh, the, the safety and tranquility of those being uh, protested against that may not be sexual offenders, that may be... Uh, exerting their religious freedom, whether they are uh, of the Mormon faith and protecting Prop 8, whether they are Scientologists, whether they are Buddhists, whether they're Muslims. We just want protections for everyone in a country where you can worship any religion you can without the, the tyranny. That's uh, true, Mr. Stone, property. but with all due respect to you, this is still a First Amendment right, and it's targeted picketing. What if a sex offender moved in next door to you and say your home was only 12 feet away from that home? How do you justify a 30-foot picketing? Go, if you read the ordinance, that I go on the, cro the, uh, the sidewalk across the street. So we need to, I think you need to reacquaint yourself with the ordinance. But then don't, doesn't that affect the other people on the other side of the street, their right to privacy? Well, that, the, the, the issue is targeted protesting, not uh, uh, assemblage of people. But it, well, why don't we just comments. rewrite the Constitution? Maybe that would work. Okay. Thank you. Our next speaker is Susan. Please don't clap. Thank you. Susan Elliott, you're next. <laughs> 